Here you guys have my uh, 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS or GSX as many would call it but realistically it's just a GS with a GSX ticker <laughs> just filled up on some ethanol for the car we're low on fuel like usual Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Miguel DSM here, and if you clicked on this video, um, it is either because you want a DSM, you want to know what a DSM is, you're interested in learning more about the DSM platform, or for your board in your room, I don't know, figure it out. But uh, today, how we're gonna do this video is basically, I'm gonna give you a brief summary about what DSM is, where it comes from, um, the different generation of eclipses, um, and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna head out to a photo shoot location here, get some nice little cinematics of the car, and then from there, give you guys my honest review with the DSM. I've been around eclipses and talons and all that stuff for a, a very long time. It's kind of sad to say, but I've been around for years and years on end, and I'm not an OG DSM or anything like that, but I've had my car for, Eight years, maybe nine. What is DSM? DSM is basically the joint venture between Chrysler and Mitsubishi back in the 80s. Um, I think the first generation Eclipse came out in 1989 with the first generation Eclipse. This lasted all the way up to 93. So you have the 1G Eclipse, which is which means first generation. Um, from there, you go into the categories of 1GA with the pop-up headlights. And then from there, you go on to the 1GB with the regular headlights. Um, both of those came powered by the 4G63 motor. I'm not sure how much power they made. I think like 180 back in the day but this is back in the early 90s so that was a lot of power back then um, these cars were really a good bang for your buck back in the day because they were cheap um, and they were easily accessible to the public considering that they were built out here in the US of A a lot of people think these are Japanese cars but no they were actually built in normal Illinois if I recall correctly so they are US based of course Mitsubishi is considered a Japanese company but with a joint venture being with Chrysler being an American company um, it's considered a domestic so um, you would see DSNs back in the day at the tracks killing these cars like left and right. These cars were honestly the best bank for your buck because they came turbo from factory and from what I heard, from what I hear about people owning DSNs back in the early 2000s, they would say that the streets would be flooded with them, they would be really popular, they were kicking everybody's butts and they were just really great cars. So I don't know what happened, it's a dying breed at this point, I only see them as more as a cult type of following for them because there's a very small amount of Mitsubishi fans and um enthusiasts i guess you can say the joint venture between mitsubishi and chrysler actually ended um i think in 94 so only some of the 95 um eclipses talons um, were considered a dsm there's always a big argument between uh, the community saying that anything past um, 94 or 95 is not considered a dsm the 3000 gt the stealth all those are not considered dsms um it's mainly, if you want to be really specific and really, you know, crazy about it, then yeah, it's pretty much anything from 89 to like 93, 94, the, the first generation Eclipses and a very few 95s. If you check your firewall of your DSM, um, it's either going to say Mitsubishi or it's going to say DSM. So that's kind of how you know. But since it's the same chassis and platform, people just kind of umbrella the rest of the second generation Eclipses onto the DSM name. Hence why I consider my 99 a DSM. Some people might say it might not be, considering that it was a 428.2. Um, if you have a naturally aspirated 140 horsepower neon powered 428 motor in your Mitsubishi Eclipse, you're constantly looked down upon. I tell you because I was that guy that had Brembo brakes from an Evo and a non turbo Eclipse. So. I used to get a lot of hate for this car, hence why I ended up swapping it because I wanted something with really nice power, but I wanted to keep my first car. This was my first car. I do have like a lot of sentimental value attached to it, which I shouldn't, but um, it is just a piece of metal. But us car guys tend to somehow get attached to our cars and can't ever get rid of them, hence why I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck with it at this point. So um, I feel like DSMs are the cars that are very, um, you, either you make it or you break it. They're, they weed out the weak, like they say. A lot of people just say that these tend to um, just get on people's nerves, people sell them, and they just get passed around like... <laughs> she belongs to the streets! Second generation Eclipse came out in 95, all the way down to 1999. Um, and within those years, you had both the 2GA and the 2GB. The 2GA had a smiley front bumper, less aggressive body lines. Um, and the 2GB, which came out in 97 to 99, later came out with a high-rise spoiler and the turbo and some non-turbo trims. Um, it came with a 210 horsepower 4G63 with a T25 turbo, which was a good amount of power, like I said, back in the 90s. So they packed the punch. They were easily modifiable. Um, people started throwing 16G, 20Gs, getting bigger fuel pump injectors, getting a tune and making four or 500 horsepower on these things. And they were crazy. Anything 
above 1999 is not considered a DSM, it's just a Mitsubishi. Um, unfortunately, the third generation and fourth generation Eclipses get no love because they're all front wheel drive, they're all naturally aspirated. The body lines aren't as cool as the first generation or second generation Eclipse. Of course, that comes down to personal opinion, but in my opinion, I think the second generation is by far the most aesthetic um, just because they're they're so bubbly, they're so round, they're fast, they're cool. Like they came out in Fast and the Furious, Need for Speed Underground. Like it's like the car you want to have if you have an Eclipse. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start heading out to the photo shoot location. I'm gonna roll some cinematics, and I want to give you guys my honest review about this car. I've had it for a minute, so I really do want to express what I think about it. And if you own one of or have owned one in the past, let me know your review in the comments down below. I'm kind of interested to see if we have any similarities or if we, if we think differently. So. Hope you guys enjoyed that quick little cinematic. The sun's still pretty bright, so I had to put a filter on the camera. But um, here is my 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse. I've had it since I was like 16, many years ago. So um, I want to give you guys my honest review about it. So um, I got it back in high school. Honestly, it was all stock, all original. It was missing this side skirt right here on the side. It had a cracked OEM taillight in the back running around this corner um, it had this really ugly dent on the door which I've never repaired I get a lot of crap from it but it's okay it's like a c-section what people call it but I will get it fixed once I paint the car this car is still on original paint and honestly to me it looks really good I know it has dents I know it has scratches the car is not perfect but that comes with a project car it's a great starter car if you want to learn the basics such as changing out the radiator changing out your spark plugs doing oil changes um, you know little miscellaneous things once you add turbo components like a turbo you know the internal wastegates the blow valve the piping um, injectors cool on plug kits intakes you start getting a little more into uh, skill and mechanical abilities so unless you want constant headaches and repairs stay away from the turbo models um, if you are not new to the car scene and are okay with working on cars and honestly a turbo GST or GSX will do just fine and the way I always say it is a DSM is kind of like that really hot girl in high school that everyone likes um, she's really pretty but she does have that ego that comes with being a really pretty girl that a lot of guys want so this car is very special very finicky it tends to give you a lot of issues especially if the previous owners did not maintain it correctly which is the number of reason why these cars have a bad reputation for being unreliable and I would be lying to you if I told you that all DSMs are unreliable no that's not true I also have friends and know people that actually have really reliable DSMs that's just because it comes down to proper care proper maintenance um, they're not really touched they're not abused when they're being driven which is kind of hard considering that they're very sporty cars um, they can go really fast especially if you have a turbo model and you have some nice modifications but overall if you don't take care of it beat on it um, and it has just bad history with previous owners being stupid with it then honestly you're just gonna have to pay the price and when it comes to buying a DSM like this just expect to have everything rebuilt from the bottom up that comes with engine transmission um, body panels sensors wiring harnesses ECU's like you name it everything's gonna have to get changed to a point where you're gonna pretty much replace everything on the car as far as recommendations if you're getting a DSM I would just say just do the basic maintenance on it as far as like timing belt components water pump oil changes transfer case or deferential transmission coolant sense any, anything that you think the car will need just to run okay um, that's what I would start off with uh, generally people tend to buy these cars and go 
straight to either aesthetics or straight to bigger turbos, bigger injectors, no tune. And these cars never get built up in the first place. So it's honestly really cool to see nice built eclipses on the internet or on the street. Um, I feel like they're starting to come out a lot more now, especially at car shows out here in SoCal. So it's a nice movement to have. It's a nice different car. Um, that you might want to be interested in joining the community is really solid honestly they might be a little special due to having no type of um, patience for the newbies because uh, the new guys do tend to ask a lot of questions about the cars that you can find online on the forums dsm tuners dsm talk uh, i forgot the rest but if you check the forums you'll find anything you need as far as the cars go they've been out for a while people have done the research um, they know what they're doing so this car has been modified extensively it even has a standalone ecu and dash um, it's tuned by Road Race out here in SoCal. Uh, makes 440 horsepower and 413 torque to the wheel. So it does move its own weight. It's not the fastest DSM, but there are some very, very fast ones out there at the tracks, killing supercars, killing Hellcats, killing anything you want. Um, and it's kind of cool to see because these are just 90s cars and, you know, they're backyard built with a big turbo and they're spanking, you know, all these Hellcats at the track. So it's really nice to see the DSMs come out and really, you know, Put some work in for the rest of us man i love walking around this thing just because it's so pretty but in conclusion i'm just gonna say from one to ten um as far as hardship of owning one um if you know nothing it's going to be a very difficult road as it was for me being in the scene for a while i feel like it's taught me everything i know to this point which i'm very thankful for um and i do feel more prepared to work on them now as the years went by and i stuck along because a lot of people tend to get rid of them as soon as they give them any type of issue and will honestly it's gonna weed out the week. As, as, as messed up as it sounds, people just don't have the patience for them. Um, I've been around them for so long and I'm kind of used to it, sadly. Um, and I'm sure there are other platforms that are just like that, so you might be able to understand that as well. So if you're new and you wanna get a DSM, be prepared to get your hands dirty, be prepared to learn, and be prepared to, you know, I don't know. I would get a membership at AutoZone because you're gonna be buying a lot of sensors and stuff like that. As far as pricing, honestly, they are still pretty cheap on the market compared to its cousins, such as the Evos and the VR4s. Um, you do tend to see them from three to 15,000 for a very well-kept stock GSX. Um, they will be going up in value over the years as they become rarer and harder to find as the 90s cars were to me, honestly, the best generation because when it comes to the VR4, the Eclipse, 300ZX, RX-7, Skyline, Super, like I feel like the 90s was the best era when it came to you know sport compacts I don't know maybe it's just me let me know but yeah honestly it's really cool to have right now especially for the price point um, if you are able to get one now to have as a project do it um, these are for long-term purposes if you plan on you know just keeping it for a little bit then you won't truly get to enjoy it to its full potential so I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there the sun's right on my face I gotta block it with my camera <laughs> But yeah, let me know what type of content you guys want to see within the channel. I'm willing to try things out. I'm just trying new video ideas out here and I'm just having fun with it. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.